varieties to advance a generation during the winter in Vietnam. And they could get two years of evaluation to say just one every year. Yes. And by the way, we would also be interested in exchanging a lecture. You could send lectures over for short term lectures. David, the State Department. How did you feel that political conditions affected your presence in the UPRA? The political conditions dictate a lot in terms of what, what can be done and what can't be done. And when you're working there, you have to be very, very careful that something doesn't go wrong. And you get options on the You have to maintain something. Now, interestingly enough, I tried to avoid as much of the politics as I could. And there are times though it was very difficult. But nevertheless, you have to do it. And as far as I was concerned. So the fact that the value of the yuan decreased a hundredfold midweek when I was there was a big political thing going on. But I just say, well, what do you think of that? I really don't understand. Uh, that's part of my degree because all the time that's what they tell me when I ask the question. <laughs> but I just try to stay away from it. But it's a very good point. And you know this, we can going to take chemo all the way around. Um, the, the political science side, the economics, the sociology, whole series of things in addition to agricultural technology to move that to move it up. And so it's a very important thing. Wow. Thank you, Carl. Yes. Uh, yes, my name is uh, Rich Peckis. I'm retired from this day's Fly Agricultural Service. And I was just call, uh, curious, uh, in the production here, is a, is a tax based on the amount they produce and have to give so much to the government, and therefore some farmers basically do that are not honest about how much they produce, and what happens when you have a crop shortfall? You know, if it's a crop shortfall, and if it can be blamed on mismanagement, then that farm manager is, has some difficulties. Uh, oftentimes, what they will, well, I don't know for sure how it works out, but I will give you an example. When sometimes we try to do an experiment, so to speak, and have the farm manager do something, and he recognizes that it's going to be something that's not going to pan out, or it may not, then generally he has to figure out a way that he can offset that loss by selling something else or doing something out of the surplus. So there is a there is a part that ends up there going to hold somewhere along the line. Now, the, the other question came a few minutes ago, and I didn't really answer very well how much support they get. I don't see very much at all in terms of, say, replacing tractors and this sort of thing. But I kind of wonder if, if one of the farmers didn't make it for them, that there would be some repercussions like that. And then the officials you worked with, did they seem to be more appointed officials because they knew somebody, or they seemed like they were really qualified and knew what they were doing? Yeah, that's, the, that's one of those, those political ones. But uh, I'm trying to get a generalized statement that I could give. Uh, they all wear the red button with pride. And uh, I, I know that. And so I can't really tell you exactly. But when it comes to the, the knowledge base, um, there's, there's a mixture. There's a mixture. And some people are in positions that it's, they have some skills of some sort, but they may not be exactly in the, in the science. And we all know that, well, it appears anyway, that North Korea is concentrating a lot of money on military issues. Are they doing this at the obvious expense of agriculture, in your opinion? I don't know for sure if it's a direct quality effect relationship, but they're not investing very much in the agricultural side right now in terms of, of uh, equipment and fuel. Now, I do give them credit because the lights went on in Pyongyang quite a few times because they were directing a lot of electricity to the rural areas to assist in the, in the threshing of the rice and the grinding of the corn stalk. That was, most people were talking about that. They were concerned about counting on the impact that the lights go off right now because they're directing the energy out to the rural areas. But other than that, I don't know. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I'm a 
Okay, I was in Thailand for a while, and the people in the upcountry there, for a time being, they were using only water buffalo, etc. for their crops, etc. I was wondering if countries like Thailand are working with you, since they do have that kind of experience with uh, the North Korea. We, we moved in Thailand, but to my knowledge, we're not linking that. We're linking with Vietnam, which is similar. In Thailand, they oftentimes use the old black buffalo. These are using the wheat, the more wheat. Like the, uh, the, uh, quickly, the, I'm going to jump in here. The five farms that you, you've had experience in visiting, any differences in availability of, of materials, tools, machinery, capacity? Are they on different levels in the U.S.? Let me back up a little bit. Uh, the farms each have sort of a distinctive mission, and I don't know for sure how that is established. And so this one is supposed to be a leader in rice and corn. And another one, they would say, well, we deal with corn and vegetables. And because of what they do, the way that the land is, what the land resource is. And then there are some that deal with fruit trees to a greater degree. And so I'm not sure how that specialization gets there, but they are they are different, and that. But I think that's a lot of it is prescribed in terms of this is the land that should be used here. Now there's one other difference that we need to point out. Right? We generally work through the Ministry of Agriculture, and I believe the defining point is that the Ministry of Agriculture deals with farms that are primarily less than 25 degrees in soil. After that, it goes to the Ministry of Land Management and Forestry. And if it's greater than 25 degrees soil, then they have jurisdiction over that plant. So we get two entities that are somewhat disconnected in terms of what they're doing that are having the primary responsibility for the agricultural product. So a lot of the forages and so on are grown on relatively smoky land and so is a lot of the corn. But they're two different ministries, and that may have some influence on what they're the I'm sorry, I, I came late, so this may have been answered. My name is Ahmed Mir. I used to be a science counselor in South Korea for the United States. Uh, did you um, find that they had any contacts with, say, ERI or International Agriculture Institutes? And what would you say, and uh, you may have said this already, um, there could be a quantum uh, change in agricultural output of North Korea if they collaborated internationally in technology and science. Two questions are somewhat related. Here is the International Rice Research Institute that the Rockefeller Foundation set up. Right now, Erie has gone on record as saying that they will share any rice germplasm that they can. And they also wanted some EPRK rice breeders to come down and take some of their classes and the short-term training program. To my knowledge, that has not happened. They don't borrow or use the term funds. Now, in our cooperation with Vietnam, we deal with the Rice Research Center in the Mekong Delta, and they come there to do their generation events. And that Rice Research Center has gone to Geary to get germplasm that they bring to Vietnam and then pass to the uh, North Koreans and they take it back. So I'm not sure if it's a political thing or if it's a practical thing, but they haven't gone directly as they said they're going to Vietnam a lot on that. The other, the other question, uh, at least the minority are going to Vietnam, they may go to China too for that matter, but Vietnam is one I know. The other question has to do with the magnitude of productivity. There have been some models run on the productivity potentials, and there's no question that they could increase productivity. I'm not sure they could double it with uh, the influx of technology, because right now the soil resource has been abused to the point where it's going to have to take some time to get it back. So the immediate return would probably be much less. But I don't think that 50% would be unrealistic within, a, say, a five to 10 year period. Maybe it could be a free, open uh, technology event. Thanks, Captain Weathers. 
speak. Um, you recommended that uh, fertilizer be sent to North Korea rather than made. Um, what kind of fertilizer? And what is your view on the issue of organic fertilizer versus petroleum uh, based fertilizer? Well, it's, it's an interesting question, too, because the, the general feeling there is that the three main fertilizers